Hi everyone and welcome to The Pink Atheist. Uh, that is going to be the name of the blog from now on, so when you look me up under on YouTube, uh, just look it up under The Pink Atheist and you will find me there. That is the permanent name and everybody seems to enjoy it, so that's what we're going to call it. Um, I wanted to discuss a couple topics today. One was questions from a creationist that I had had and we're going to go over those. And the second one was the selection of uh, Paul Ryan for hopeful VP under Mitt Romney. Um, some of us are not as hopeful that he will ever become vice president uh, and especially with what he believes is right for women's choices. Uh, first I did want to address the questions that I had from the creationist. I know that he'll be listening to this podcast later um, so I just wanted to go over that first. One of the things that he had asked me, um, he had actually asked me on Facebook, was why are humans so small now if in the past they had been uh, giants? And he presented that in the Quran, it says that humans used to be 150 to 200 feet. Now, I'm not sure if this is an exaggeration or a misunderstanding on his part. I've never even heard of, of this, and honestly, I don't uh, delve into the Quran too much. Um because I, I have read a little bit of it, enough to make me nauseous and, and not want to really delve further. Um, but it would be interesting to read these passages. So I wanted to present to him the reasons that it is not possible to be 150 to 200 feet tall. Now he also claimed that there was changes in the atmosphere, which there have been over time as evolution has gone on. Uh, there have been a lot of changes in our environment. Um, and he said that the, the nutrition had changed, everything had changed, and that's why we're smaller now. And it's just absolutely ludicrous. I mean, uh, some of the dinosaurs that existed during the Mesozoic would have probably been approximately 200 feet tall at best. And that's if, you know, their elongated necks were lifted high. And otherwise, I, I doubt that they would have been even that extensively tall, and uh, for a human to be that tall, um, they would have to have massive arteries, massive, massive pulmonary system. I mean, their whole body would have been massive. You're talking about an individual who probably would have weighed a few tons. Um, I know that some of the biggest dinosaurs that ever walked the earth were as massive as 220,000 pounds, and uh, that's Argentinosaurus who is absolutely gigantic, um, but I, I don't even think that it would measure up to 200 feet tall. And humans are bipedal, and, uh, you know, the dinosaurs, a lot of them were quadrupedal, uh, not all of them, depending upon what species they were. But the importance of that is that if you're going to be a massive beast, uh, and we see this, the quadrupeds were more massive than the bipedal dinosaurs, uh, just as humans couldn't achieve a certain amount of massiveness and continue to be bipedal. Um, that's because it puts a lot of strain on your pulmonary system, uh, your coronary system, and a lot of that has to adapt. And being 200 feet tall, uh, you wouldn't be able to breathe in the capacity and the immense, enormous amount of, of gravity on you. Now, as far as the atmosphere changing, it has changed. We did have periods where the CO2 was higher or the oxygen was higher, and we find evidence of that in the fossil record, uh, but we don't find any evidence of humans actually being that big, and that's because it's not possible. Um, We've never found a mummy, a body, a skeleton that is even anywhere near that. And one of his retorts to me was that uh, we have graves like King David that are 15, 20 feet long, um, even longer. And I said to him that perhaps that's just the, the size of the sarcophagus. It, it doesn't actually proclaim that they're actually that big. And uh, he, he really believes this. And there's no way. I mean, an uh, individual would have to weigh a few thousand pounds at least to be 150 feet tall. You would not be breathing the same air. I mean, that's quite an altitude. I can't even imagine, you know, tripping and falling at 200 feet tall. You would 
definitely smash smash your body up a lot. And like I said, it, if there was evidence for this, archaeologists and paleontologists, all of them would be all over this and, and displaying it. And this would be a fascination to humans. And we don't see that. And the reason for that is, once again, it never happened. And unfortunately, this is a theistic thing. Um, you can't prove that something actually happened, but you make the claim. And this, this is one of the problems that I have with theism. So many claims, so little evidence. And we need to really set the standard high here. And uh, he really believes that, that the Quran is correct. And, you know, one of the things that I really get irritated with with theists is they don't tend to listen as much as they tend to spew garbage. And that's what this is. I mean, when you have no evidence to present, and he, sa he was saying that there were villages of people like this, um, having villages of people means evidence for villages of people. It means that you are going to find utensils. It means that you're going to find debris of homes. It means that you're going to find skeletons. And none of that has ever been found. None of it can be proclaimed. And it's not a conspiracy on the part of the scientific community. We definitely don't find ourselves wanting to um, be, you know, exclusive in, in discounting evidence that's actually found. We don't find ourselves wanting to have conspiracies and cover-ups, and that's not what science is. You know, um, one of the greatest things about scientists is that we are human and we are flawed, but when it comes to our science, when it comes to the degree that we hold ourselves to, for the time period, we usually tend to have very good standards. Now, I can, I can say that there have been periods where certain evidence and science found wasn't always accepted, um, and that's tragic. Uh, especially like in Darwin's era when he came out with the theory of evolution and uh, change over time. It wasn't highly regarded. I mean, uh, the professionals understood it, respected it, saw what he had done. But of course, you have the creationists who believe that God made this world in six days and rested on the seventh, and that this world is only 6,000 years old. It, it is uh, beyond comprehension for me to see the fossils that I have and the evidence that I have and think that science would be such uh, deviance that we would have to invent evidence or manipulate the evidence. We are willing to show whatever we can that is the truth because the fact is that the, the evidence and the truth that we portray affects not just us, but the future of humanity. So the good that we're doing by being uh, so honest is we're promoting uh, a better future. And if there had been people who were 200 feet tall, we would be more than astounded by that development because that is, is beyond what we physically can conceive a human being being. I mean, um, that would actually be as tall as some of the biggest uh, redwoods in California. That would be immensely enormous, and I mean, some of those weigh two, three thousand pounds. So I can't imagine what a human would weigh at 200 feet tall, or the oxygen that they would need, uh, the food intake, um, the density in the bones and the tissue, and the muscle structure. It would absolutely be astounding uh, to, to try and achieve that height. And he was saying that over time, uh, what happens is you need tall people to get the shorter ones as, as things change. And I said to him that, no, there is no direction for evolution. Um, throughout our time, there have been taller and shorter individuals within groups. Uh, there is genetic diversity. Humans are not a complacent size. I mean, you can't get a whole 
a country that is absolutely the same size or even a village, you have variation within those as well. Um, so there hasn't been like an odd distribution in size. Now when it comes to nutrition, um, there can be variations in, in the size we grow due to that. But that is not a genetic factor, that is an environmental factor. And that's one we need to take into account. Because even with the best nutrition and uh, all of the best food available to us, uh, still the immense amount of calories that you would need to intake to be 200 feet tall is enormous. So it, it, it's just not possible. It's not medically possible. It's not scientifically possible to be 200 feet tall. And really, I, I hope that when he hears this, he reconsiders his position. But I doubt that he will. Um, so <laughs> something to look forward to hearing a rebuttal on. The next topic that I wanted to talk about is Paul Ryan and his nomination for a possible VP under Mitt Romney. This is, uh, you know, just more blatant show of the Republicans' disregard for women and the way that they feel about us. Uh, I was not shocked by Romney's choice as far as this guy being anti-choice and pro-life because uh, Romney seems to have this delusion that as long as uh, he can make choices for women it's fine if they don't get one and that's a lot of the Republicans right now we seem to have this extreme uh, anti-women movement and the war on women it absolutely does exist and I think it exists for a lot of reasons um, most of those being to avoid other issues that really need talked about right now. But it's easier to throw women under the bus and homosexuals under bu the bus during the election than face the crisis of our nation. And especially with men like Romney who, you know, are, are wealthy and they've never been poor and they don't know what it is like to be poor. And I was reading a sum up on uh, Paul Ryan and... Uh, it seems that one of the key factors that they're pushing forward is the fact that he lost his father when he was young, and for that him that was hard, uh, but if you look at his record from going to college and everything like that, he really hasn't had to suffer too much, and he's still had all of the benefits um, from having the father that he did. It's obvious that he really isn't working class. He really hasn't had to suffer. He really doesn't know uh, what it's like to be a working class American. And this is the problem. You have Romney with offshore accounts that he claims to not know how much is in there. Um, and then you have Ryan, who's a newcomer, but his voting record with the Republicans is 68% uh, voting constantly and consistently with the Republican Party. Now, uh, I was reading the statistics on that, and those statistics say that he actually votes uh, with his party so much that he's in the leading majority for how much he votes with his party. So if his party were to put forward a bill eliminating women's right to choice, um, he would definitely be on board with that. And he is one of those Republicans that doesn't believe that abortion should happen even in the case of incest or rape, which I find absolutely disgusting because uh, not only does the victim have to deal with what happened to them, but then they have to deal with the fact that they have no choice of that outcome. And that's, uh, that's like causing them to suffer twice. It, it's adding insult to injury, and I'm offended by men who take this position. Uh, a lot of men will never know what it's like, you know, for a woman to, to go through these ordeals, and I respect that there are men who've helped women through rape and through incest and, and been uh, caretakers and been, you know, friends and and companions to them and understood the situation that they're in but um for a woman who's placed in that that situation where she has to choose uh it's never easy and then when you complicate that with incest or rape um that makes it tremendously difficult because, you know, a, a woman has to ask herself why she's getting an abortion anyway. And then when you 
put the complexity of, am I doing it out of hate? Am I doing it because, you know, am I punishing this? Um, and I don't consider a fetus a baby. For me, a uh, baby has been born, a fetus is in utero, um, and it doesn't get the right to determine uh, the outcome of a woman's life. Um, as well as medically, if a woman has to have an abortion, I feel that uh, abortion is necessary. There are almost 7 billion of us on this planet. Uh, we are consuming resources. We are, are absolutely devastating some of the nature that exists on this planet. And even though we have evolutionary patterns of things dying out and new species emerging, uh, us humans have been guilty of a lot of uh, species that have gone extinct. So, back to my point about the abortion. Um, there is plenty of us here on Earth, and, you know, if a woman has to make that choice, I feel that she should not only not have to worry about what public is going to think about her, but she should make it guilt-free. I mean, um, it is a hard decision, I'm sure, for women who have to choose it. And I respect them. I respect a woman who knows that she's getting into a situation she can't handle. Or she's about to become a parent and it, it's not something she can deal with. Or it's not the right time. And when it comes to rape, when it comes to incest, when it comes to medical necessity, I think absolutely the interference of the state in that situation is abhorred and it's intrusive and it's unwarranted. I mean, um, we don't chase men down and ask them, what did you do with your ejaculation? Where did that go? We don't intrude into when they ejaculate. We don't intrude into how many times they ejaculate. But when it comes to women, the state feels that they get a right to mandate our bodies. And that to me is, it, it's mind-blowing. Um, we live in a society that's advancing in science in astounding ways, and yet we have these backward-minded theists who want to impose their beliefs, their religious dogmatic beliefs, upon those of us who have a uterus, and simply because uh, they think that they can dictate when life begins. The fact is, life doesn't begin until you can self-sustain, and uh, I think that it's deplorable that they use us and throw us under the bus in an election year, and prior to this election year, leading up to it, so that they can set an example of their abuse of power, and, and it's based upon their theology. I really have no respect for religion when it invades the right of a woman to her body. Um, I think everybody who votes this November should vote with the anger that I have inside my heart for these people. Simply because they want to eliminate my personhood over a fetus. And it's absolutely disgusting that a fetus rates higher on uh, the value. A, a fetus has more value than I have as a human being, as a living, walking being. And then to see them want to eliminate access to Plan B, which protects a woman from getting pregnant, should she have had um, missed a pill or been raped or gone through incest. And then they also want to eliminate the certain uh, areas where they give birth control based upon religious ideology. I mean, this is, this is just an all-out-and-out -out attack on women and our rights and our values. It's like saying that we have no uh, worth to society, we have no worth to anything, that we just exist to have babies. And I refuse... I refuse to be denigrated to that level. I mean, no man gets treated like this. Well, I don't care what your ideology, what your religion says. Don't impose it upon me because I'm not going to let you. I am one of those women who will stand up for my rights. And um, I have actually been part of the whole uh, contacting my congressmen, contacting my senators, letting my voice be heard because I will not resolve myself to uh, learning science and becoming a scientist to be treated like nothing more than a baby carrying 
womb, a walking uterus. This is, it's deplorable behavior. And I can't imagine um, this country in this day and age actually going for this. And yet, so many states have tried to pass laws. We have at least 50 senators who are guilty, as well as... Um, as well as governors, as well as legislatures, all of them who are in this business of trying to strip women of their rights. And this war has gone as far as to attack homosexuals. And that's another thing that I find deplorable. Um, it, it, it's blatantly in your face religious ideology at this point. You can visibly see the effects of the religion on our society. And this is a point where we have to take a stand. We cannot be idle in this because as it progresses, it will get worse. I mean, when you talk about my youth and whenever I was growing up, I don't even recall this intrusive amount of invasion. Um, I do recall more women's lib shows. I recall uh, women struggling for more power. And I recall women actually making it. And those those were my examples growing up. And so I am very cultured in the idea of women being equal to men as far as uh, human rights goes, as far as voting rights goes, as far as that equality goes. And um, seeing men like Romney disgusts me because they have no clue. Um, they see, and you can see it by his family structure, they think that women only exist for having babies, which is obvious that that's his position, um, having five sons. Um, he obviously practices what he preaches, which is kind of scary, because, you know, his wife has been through a lot, and still they have five sons to raise. And I'm sure that his time at home is not equal to her time at home. And women do a lot uh, as far as the family structure. And to see women relegated to nothing more than walking wombs, like I said before, just absolutely disgusting. And... I love bashing on religion because of that, because religion just, religion sets the example for these guys to have this arrogant attitude um, that women have no value and worth other than procreation. And uh, to me, it's absurd. It's like saying, uh, sure, you have a brain, but there's really no reason for you to have it. Because uh, I believe that God gave you just a uterus for you to use it. I mean, it, it ignores all biology, it ignores all of the science that I understand, and it actually just blows my mind that anyone can consider themselves educated and treat women in this, this fashion. I wrote a post earlier this week, and I just want to say this before we wrap up. Um, one of the things that I really believe in is us stepping forward as atheists and us getting our voice out there. We really have to take a, a stance here. And I was reading an article the, uh, the other day on this, and um, the article was talking about the fact that an aggressive attitude... Um, can do more harm than good for the atheist community. Um, it's called the Atheist Visibility Movement. Um, that's the name of the article, and it's by Valerie Tarico. I do believe her name is. Um, it was well written. At first, I thought that she was going to go on the side of, you know, um, an apologetic stance where, you know, we are not aggressive with theists. And then I saw that she was talking about... Um, the aggressive atheist paving the way for the more, um, I, I call them apologetic stance atheists. And it is true. Uh, if we don't behave aggressively now, the future I can't imagine for children coming up in this world where states are legislated by theocracy, by religious dogmas, um, and I can't see that Christianity is going to back off quietly, especially when they have people who are leading it that are absolutely insane over it. Um, when you see things that say... Uh, Christians should want to die for their Lord like the Muslims want to die for Allah. Uh, you kind of get scared and taken aback. 
And I know I am. And so one of the things that I would really love is for us to be out and out voices. Um, examples for our community, outspoken, outgoing. And I've realized in my own personal life, the more that I'm outspoken spoken and, and confront the ideas of people, and I'm still a good person, and I still help people, and I still um, maintain that, that interpersonal relationship, the less that people are terrified by the idea that I am an atheist. Um, I'm sure that it's going to have some profound effects on my life, and I'm aware of that, um, but I'm willing to face those consequences, and I'm willing to take that on, because that's the kind of person that I am. There is no problem in atheists speaking out. Uh, an, a religious person is never persecuted for their speaking out, and we should never be persecuted for our speaking out. And if only one person speaks out, then it's easier to persecute them. But if the community starts speaking out and starts getting loud, and we stand by what we say, and we stand by our views of eliminating dogma in the workplace, in the courthouses, uh, in the Senate, in in the White House, and we start saying, okay, you can have your religion, but we get to keep it separate from our legislation, from our uh, laws, from our government, then I think that that's going to have a profound effect. Right now, we see a lot of dogmatic people being elected, and that's because dogma has gotten to take the lead. They've been practicing at this for years. They've been corrupting our schools. They've been taking over the children. They've been indoctrinating, and now they have their creationist museum, which absolutely is a museum in no way of the word. I mean, there are no fossils there. There are only exhibits created by creationist ideology. Now, if you walk into any other museum in the United States, you will see fossils, you will see explanations that follow scientific guidelines, you will see standards. But the creationists don't have to have standards. They can create stories, they can sell those stories, and they can indoctrinate children. All of those are horrific things because they are, are basically, they are taking down everything that we have done to move this nation forward. And uh, if we're not moving forward, we're definitely going backward. And I've heard a lot of rhetoric on the part of theists about going back. And that's their their mentality, is a return to the old, a return to the old. Um, and that benefits no one. I mean, in the olden days, uh, children mortality rates were high. Uh, we had a lot of deaths based upon things we couldn't understand. Um, we didn't live as long. We weren't as healthy. We didn't do as well. We weren't educated. And we have come to this point because science took the time to enlighten us. If it had not been for men like Van Leeuwenhoek and Pasteur, we would have never moved past those dark ages. And it took men of science doing extreme things in extreme ways. And I realized that science, um, you know, we have to use caution in what we do, and we have to have morality in what we do. But in the same token, we can't shut down doing those important scientific experiments based upon fear and dogma. And stem cells is one that uh, we'll have to get into another time. But, you know, the, the future of our country is dependent upon atheists and them being able to speak out and them being able to let the world see what they think. So I hope all of you that hear this really get the idea. Speak out. Don't be afraid. Let the world know that we are here and we're here to stay and that we have the evidence. Um, I love 